Hey, what's up guys? Gons here for the Face Like the Sun channel. There is a recent TEDx talk that was published. Actually, I think it was published just now. Analog supercomputers from quantum atom to living body, Rahul Sarpeshkar, TEDx Dartmouth. And I will leave a link. You guys should check it out. And he basically verifies all the things that we've been talking about, how the digital and the physical are becoming one and you know, all these things that sound crazy. Well, this is a guy who is explaining practically from the world of science how all these things work. And he even has a analog circuit pentagon of science, not a pentagram, but a pentagon of science in which he explains where all of this science with physics and everything that we know traditionally through the computational sciences and digitization where it's headed and he believes that the nexus point is the analog supercomputers but he says some very interesting things so let me uh, play a little bit of this end part for you here so i've gone a long distance from physics through chemistry to biology to computer science you must be wondering how are these all connected and it's actually very simple Physics led to chemistry through quantum and classical interactions. Physics led to electronics through quantum and classical interactions. I just showed you how to map chemistry to electronics with the cytomorphic Boltzmann mapping. Because of that, we can do synthetic biology, which is the top piece where chemistry goes into biology with molecular reaction circuits. We can also build computers to emulate cells, which are the electronic analog and digital circuits. Which means, and not only that, I just showed you, you can also be inspired by biology. You could take an architecture in the biology to do something in computer science you would have never imagined before, a quantum-inspired or bio-cochlear-inspired computer. And for a long time, math has been used to use biology as well. So what I'm telling you is that the wet and the dry are very deeply connected. We have to learn to be amphibians, and if we do, there are a lot of applications that can bring together this universal language of analog circuits and the analog circuit pentagon to do many things. The universal language of the analog circuit pentagon of science uh, just sounds exactly like what we hear about at the Tower of Babel. And uh, just another thing that verifies as it were in the days of Noah. So. I think it's really interesting and he talked about again the wet and the dry coming together even that we have to be amphibians very interesting especially when you consider revelation 16 13 where it says i saw coming out of the mouth of the dragon and out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophet three unclean spirits like frogs i just thought it was interesting and uh wanted to mention that that we need to be amphibians and that the digital and the analog or the wet and the dry are coming together through analog and you know this is something that we talked about before with the m's and this is how artificial intelligence is probably going to become quote unquote sentient is that not so much that we're going to build our own artificial intelligent being but actually mimicking or creating a mirror image where the biology itself will upload into digital systems in which they can begin to, I don't know, exist, have consciousness. These are questions that, you know, people have been asking for a long time, but this guy is coming at it from a more practical, hard science, if you will, type of direction. And through computer science and where it's headed, I find it interesting. And he talks about a paradigm shift here. So my paradigm shift is actually a very, very simple one. We need to go back to the future collective analog computers like nature does in physics, chemistry, and biology, and not be so mesmerized by the ones and zeros that we think are so great. In fact, the founders of computer science, Alan Turing, was working on biological computing near the end of his life. The person who built the first digital computer, von Neumann, widely acknowledged to do so, was looking at quantum measurement the founders of computer science understood this. Von Neumann said, the only reason I am working on a digital computer is because it's the simplest thing to do, logic and ones and zeros. He was already studying the brain to study its analog properties. So we have to move from the set of zeros and ones to the line of real numbers and to the set of complex numbers in quantum mechanics. And if we do, 
The future is not digital. It's analog. Let's go back to it. Thank you. Okay, so a paradigm shift that's taking place is going back to the future, going back to the old. And if we talk about what's emerging with blockchains and cryptocurrencies and all that stuff that we talk about, the idea of networks, consensus networks that are not centralized databases, but a spread out network database that all need to agree and to, you know, have a consensus ledger in order to operate within it and to interact with it. You have to have this network agree with you. So in that sense, when we start talking about analog nodes, eventually what's going to happen is us humans, we will become the nodes. And again, this is a thesis that's been there for a long time, but it just becomes even more clear how simple this is in terms of the science, or at least the alleged science, and, and the graph here that he has. Let's see, where is it? There it is. The analog circuit pentagon of science. You can see how the logic from physics, which split off into chemistry and electronics, which connected back together through thermodynamic cytomorphic circuit mapping, but each having, you know, biology and computer science as something that happened through analog and digital circuits or molecular reaction circuits, which are similar in what he explains in this lecture. And then biology and computer science having the ability to have computational biology or bio-inspired computation. It's a two-way street. And that's where it gets dangerous because, again, this is biology or not just human biology, but any kind of biology informing computer science and informing the systems of you know, networking and databases that are going to become basically like biology. And so, yes, it's so wondrous that we are, you know, opening up this avenue, but what's really happening is we are giving life, literally breathing, you know, whatever sorts of systems or the image of life, right? Because it's not actually the breath of life. We're actually giving it the image of life to computers through this avenue being open, computational biology and bio-inspired computation. And again, he goes into examples in his lecture how you can you know map out atoms and create frequency charts and uh, being able to visualize these things it's the next step into you know how we can manage and help people and certainly the medical side of this is going to be very powerful it's going to heal a lot of things it's going to fix a lot of stuff but ultimately what is it leading towards and again this is where i think bible prophecy eschatology the man of sin all these things come into play because what may be being summoned here and created is very, very similar to the stuff we read in the book of Revelation, especially in chapter 13 regarding the mark and this image that might even speak and might cause those who don't worship the image to be slain. This all-powerful thing that is going to be created through this. In any case, I just wanted to share this with you because I thought it was interesting. I do find it interesting that he had to make it into a pentagon shape. In theory, he could have made this into a pentagram and just you know, shown that this line has been completed, so to speak, but it also has kind of that Kabbalah tree of life sort of layout with this as well, which I'm sure somebody can dig into and find parallels with that sort of philosophy and worldview kind of undergirding some of these things that are being developed now. So anyway, I'll leave a link in the description. Let me know what you guys think. Have an awesome day, guys. God bless.